Okay, everyone, let's continue looking at module 26111-23, Residential Wiring in the NCCR 11th edition. This is section 2.00, Grounding and Bonding. Grounding and Bonding. Grounding and bonding protect people and equipment. Grounding is connecting an electrical system to the earth. Bonding is connecting the non-current carrying conductive parts of a system together to create a conductive path. Two classifications of grounding, system grounding and equipment grounding. Examining a residential grounding system, the NEC allows the grounded conductor and electric service to be smaller than the ungrounded conductor. It must be sufficient to carry the fault current back to the source. NEC section 250.24A1 specifies how the grounding electrode must be connected in a panel board. Using grounding electrodes, NEC article 250 part three lists the requirements for connecting electric services to the grounding electrode system of a building or structure. Often in residential construction, the only grounding electrode available is a metal underground water piping system. This must be supplemented with another electrode. Grounding electrode installations. NEC section 250.33A1 requirements for rod, pipe, and plate electrodes include buried below the permanent moisture level, free from any non-conductive coating such as paint or enamel. A rod or pipe electrode may be driven at a 45 degree angle if rock is encountered or it may be laid in a trench that is at least 30 inches deep. NEC section 250.53A2 specifies when a supplemental electrode is required. Grounding electrode conductor or GEC. NEC section 250.62 covers the requirements for GECs that connect the neutral grounded conductor at the panel board neutral bus to the grounding electrodes. It must be made of copper aluminum or copper clad aluminum. It must be protected against corrosion and it may either be solid or stranded and insulated, covered or bare. It does not have to be identified using the color green or green with a yellow stripe if insulated. Installing GECs, NEC section 250.64 covers the installation requirements for GECs. Connecting GECs, NEC section 250.70 requires that the GEC must be connected to the electrodes using exothermic welding, listed pressure connectors, listed clamps, listed lugs, or other listed means. Sizing GECs, for sizing grounded electrode conductors, NEC section 250.66 requires you to use the area of the largest service entrance conductor or the equivalent area for parallel conductors. Use NEC table 250.66 to find the minimum size GEC and any bonding jumpers you may need to interconnect grounding electrodes. Air terminals or lightning protection. NEC section 250.60 covers using air terminal conductors and driven pipes, rods, or plate electrodes for grounding air terminals. NEC section 250.106 requires that they be bonded to the structure's wiring and equipment grounding electrode system. Main bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper or MBJ is the conductor that connects the grounded circuit conductor and the equipment grounding conductor. The MBJ allows any ground fault in the branch circuits and feeders of the electrical system to travel back to the source of the supply at the utility. Methods of bonding at the service. NEC section 250.92A requires electrical continuity at the service. NEC section 250.92B includes methods that should be used to ensure the electrical continuity of the service equipment, raceways, and enclosures. Bonding of other piping systems. Inter-system bonding terminations or IBTs. Devices are covered in NEC section 250.94A. NEC section 250.104A sets the rules for how to bond a metallic water piping system. NEC section 250.104B covers how to bond other types of piping systems. Installing the equipment grounding system. NEC article 250 covers equipment grounding and equipment grounding conductors. NEC section 250.110 lists the conditions which require the exposed metal parts of fixed equipment to be grounded. NEC section 250.118 covers the types of conductors that may be used. Here's some trade terms you should read over and become familiar with for this session. And some review questions for this session. When using a grounding electrode, a ground ring must be at least 5 foot, 10 foot, 15 foot, or 20 foot. That would be 20 foot or 6 meters long. When a screw is used as a main bonding jumper, its finished color must be white, green, blue, or black. 
and that's going to be green. Information on equipment grounding for computers is found in NEC section 250.112, 250.114, 250.116, or 250.118. That would be NEC section 250.114. All right, everyone, that was it for that session. Next session will be 3.00, installing service entrance equipment. I'll see you over there.